Operation Gideon was a high-stakes mission that unfolded in the midst of a power struggle in Venezuela. It all began in January 2019, when Juan Guaido, president of the opposition majority National Assembly, challenged the legitimacy of Nicolas Maduro's re-election as president. This set the stage for a tense political atmosphere leading to the emergence of Operation Gideon. Jordan Goudreau, a former U.S. Army Green Beret, founded a private security firm called Silver Corps USA. Jordan sought to assist the Venezuelan opposition in removing President Maduro, offering his services to execute a mission known as Operation Gideon. The first phase of the operation was to establish contact with a few hundred Venezuelan military defectors who left the military once Maduro retained his power in a questionable election. Once they established communications with the defectors in Colombia, they soon realized that the true numbers of defectors were way smaller than expected. It was barely 60 people. Nonetheless, they would continue with the operation and would train the defectors for the upcoming mission. Their mission called for a covert entry into Venezuela from Colombia, utilizing high-speed boats to stealthily make landfall with their team. Their ultimate objective was to reach Caracas, the capital city, and execute the planned operation to destabilize Maduro's government. This involved seizing control of the Simón Bolivar airport and orchestrating the arrival of a plane designated to fly Maduro to the United States. In May 2020, Operation Gideon was launched just before dawn on Sunday, May 3rd, by Luke Denman, Aaron Barry, and Jordan Goudreau veterans of the 10th Special Forces Group. However, Operation Gideon encountered significant obstacles from the beginning. It suffered from poor planning, limited resources, and insufficient coordination among the participants. The boats departed from Colombia in two waves. Many of the soldiers on board experienced seasickness and vomiting during the journey. An initial confrontation took place between the first boat and the Venezuelan Navy. According to Jordan, the leader of the operation, the second boat had not yet reached Venezuela and was running low on fuel. One person who was noticeably not in a boat heading to the Venezuelan coast was Jordan himself. Instead, he was in another location recording a video to announce to the world that the operation was underway. Months prior to its planned execution, the Venezuelan government possessed comprehensive knowledge of the operation from a corrupt commander. They were well informed about the impending mission, including crucial details such as the identities of the Green Berets involved, the targeted locations for the attack, and all intricacies of the plan. Maduro's second-in-hand, Diostato Cabello, even went on Venezuelan national TV and detailed the plan of the coup before it even happened. Aquí tres. En el escenario, Estados Unidos, Jordan, Luke, the operation was effectively compromised even before the plotters could reach the shores of Caracas. The Venezuelan military and security forces intercepted the infiltrators, leading to immediate confrontations that swiftly defeated the coup plotters. Several men were killed while others were captured, including the Green Berets. The operation was a complete failure. It's fair to say things haven't gone well for anyone even remotely implicated in the failed raid. During a TV address on May 4th, Maduro ridiculed the members of the invasion force as playing Rambo and held up IDs the two Americans had apparently been carrying on them when they were captured, including Barry's passport as well as other Silver Corps IDs. Guaido remains on the defensive, fielding questions about his involvement and whether he orchestrated a coup attempt with American help. The captured Green Berets faced a difficult situation. They were held in Venezuelan custody, subjected to harsh interrogations, and concerns were raised about their treatment and the conditions of their detention. The former Green Berets had claimed responsibility for planning the attack and said that they were working with Juan Guaido, Maduro's American-backed opposition. The Green Berets arrested have ever since been paraded by officials on Venezuelan national TV as proof of their long-held claims that the United States is set on violently overthrowing Maduro's socialist government. While U.S. officials have disclaimed any involvement in the attack, they have refrained from disclosing the extent of their knowledge regarding the existence of training camps in Colombia. Venezuelan court 
has sentenced the two former Green Berets to 20 years in prison for their part in the coup. The failed coup attempt had significant repercussions, both internally and internationally. The Maduro government used Operation Gideon as an opportunity to further suppress political opposition and dissent. This repression led to increased tensions and accusations of foreign interference. The international community closely watched the events unfold, with some countries recognizing Juan Guaido as the interim president of Venezuela. However, the failed operation posed setbacks to Guaido's efforts to challenge Maduro's rule and gain broader international support. But let us know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.